Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine and I vlog daily to keep you updated on the real-life situation in my country as this awful war with Russia continues. But I'm sure that with Ukrainian bravery and international support we will win and I invite you to subscribe to the channel if you're new so that you can witness this process together with all of us. And today I want to speak about private Russian armies, a topic that is quite unusual for a girl, perhaps, but um, inside Ukrainian society we've got lots of joke when we discuss the topics that were so far away from our uh, like interests before the start of the war and now like an average Ukrainian is an expert in different kinds of missiles, different kinds of military machinery that can be used, types of, I don't know, uh, other things so uh, we are aware of all of that and some especially those who live in hot zones can even identify um, missiles uh, grads uh, different types of planes based on the sound that they produce so uh, in my vlog I always tell you that I'm not a military expert not a political expert but an expert subjective Ukrainian because I'm very much into my country its culture history and things that are happening to it now because we do have this feeling that we live inside of a very important historical period and I want to share with you my subjective thoughts and in one of our previous uh, vlogs I discussed uh, the Wagner group which is a private army uh, and it now tries to attack Ukrainian armed forces in Bakhmut. This is actually the territory that they are responsible for. And I realized that I have heard a lot about uh, Wagner Group, some scandals that were on the media in 2021, and that I know a few like facts about this army, but uh, I would like to learn more to be aware of what kind of phenomena that is in general. And I was actually surprised because it led me to some idea that I want to share with you and I will be grateful if you will support or <laughs> tell me that I'm wrong in comments. Well, first of all, Wagner Group has a totally different name, Liha or something like that officially, and it is registered as a private army. But in Russia, everything is hidden in darkness, so you cannot be 100% sure that it is a private army. It is also very likely that it is a secret part of FSB or other military uh, structures inside Russia that is very easily controlled without all this hierarchical military steps that need to be taken with ordinary Russian army. Why? because uh, they've received lots of medals from uh, the so-called president dictator Putin. Also, they have all the best equipment given by state and they are financed by state. This is a very Putin-style um, kind of army. Why? Because they can fight for Russia's interest in disguise in different places of the world pretending that this is not Russia fighting but just a private army that consists of different international fighters. But like the core of that army is definitely Russians, some of them are professional ex-military and there are also many 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 prisoners. So at uh, Wagner Group appeared in 2013, very s close to uh, um, the war the start of the war in Ukraine and they participated in the annexation of Crimea and also in Donbass. And at the beginning it was close to 1000 people, now it is more than 8000 people. And they participated in different military operations as Russia likes to call it all over the world, in uh, Ukraine, in Syria, in Sudan, in uh, Venezuela, in Libya and everywhere they have very bad like uh, footprint if it's possible to say so why because being a um, private army they are less controlled by everybody and uh, they are guilty of many crimes against humanity while performing their military operations this is what we witness in ukraine and i'm sure other countries who suffered from wagner group can prove that too so this status that you don't actually know what are they 
helps uh, them uh, commit crimes or perform some tasks that are not normal at all from the perspective of the international law. What is also interesting in Russia, there are many private armies and it's pretty complicated to find their like registration, their real name. They have two, three names, just like an example with Wagner Group, then it's known as Liha, and there are some other names that you come across. Uh, so it's very difficult to identify like who is responsible for what and so on and so forth. How does a typical contract for a Wagner soldier look? Um, they have uh, operations that last from one to six months. Uh, they are paid and in case of uh, the death of the soldier, if he's killed, performing some dirty Russian tasks somewhere in the world. The family receives compensation, but his body is not brought back home. And I think there are dozens of examples when Russians leave their soldiers uh, in the situations when these soldiers still can be saved or at least, uh, I don't know, honored. But Russians never care about uh, that. And uh, what is also interesting uh, today, this army receives all the best from Russian state, and um, they have uh, the, they have modern equipment, better weapons, uh, better supplies, and other similar groups appear. And what is ridiculous from this, like I don't know, citizen perspective, even is that the Minister of Defense of Russia, the Minister of Defense of Russia, Shoihu, has his own private army. A question, can you imagine a situation like that, that the acting Minister of Defense also has his own private army? What can this demonstrate? The only fact that Putin is totally dissatisfied with the actions and with the results of this standard ordinary Russian army. Uh, failure in Ukraine, failure of Blitzkrieg, retreats, and so on, shows that he has no belief in uh, ordinary battalions and other things. And that's why, starting from a pretty long period of time, they receive the worst equipment. They start repairing cars and tanks that are 40, 50 years old. And all the best equipment that is produced or bought from allies of Russia is given to these private armies so that they can perform separate tasks, something that they do right now in Bakhmut. And the leader of this Wagner group, Prihozhin, is trying to take Bakhmut, first of all, to demonstrate the efficiency of uh, his private army, to get more access to money, to state money, and also to have control over salt production, uh, industries in Bakhmut because it is the center of salt production which can also bring him money. As a result, competition, aggressive competition, hatred exists between these small private armies like Wagner, Shoigu and there are others that I will not name you. And to some extent this is good for us because like when these armies are quarreling, this Russian private or so-called private armies quarrel between each other, this leads to conflict and to less efficiency. But what is more important, this can demonstrate the tendency of uh, this collapse of Russian army. That's what was believed to be the second strongest army in the world and now it is the second strongest army in Ukraine. This is a tendency that demonstrates a separation inside Russian army and the appearance of smaller groups of influence that will be rivals. And in future, this can be mirrored to the situation in politics. So these may be very good signs actually for the future of uh, the world, taking into account that Russian military and Russian society is uh, trying to collapse and trying to separate from each other, not believing in this state, exactly, actually, because the appearance of these private groups easily controlled, but belonging to different zones of influence is actually an example that Russia is no more centralized from this military and political point 
of you. So that's what I think. Let me know if you think that that way or maybe there is something that I don't understand not being an expert. But anyway, let's hope that the only thing that private armies of Wagner, of Kadyrov will demonstrate in Ukraine is another level of failure. Actually, now it looks like that. And I'm really happy that Ukrainian armed forces are strong and united in their desire to take our enemy out of the territory of our free and independent and beautiful Ukraine. Thank you so much for your congratulation on the 40,000 of subscribers. It is such an honor and I'm I'm feel I feel so like happy and proud that I have you in these dark times, in these difficult times and that you are a special community of very clever, very kind and uh, very my people. Thank you for that. If you're new to the channel and you like my videos, please subscribe because the world needs to know more about Ukraine. Thank you so much for buying me coffees, for becoming my patrons and Slava Ukraini.